for the arrival of the official party, playing of the national anthem, and the invocation. I invite you to join with me in a time of prayer. Good and gracious God, you are ever faithful in all things. You are the author of our lives, and your scriptures tell us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. We gather here today to honor one of your children, our brother, Command Sergeant Major Corey Fairchild, as he puts up his sword to study war no more. For his paramount faithfulness and dedication to duty and defense of freedom and peace, we give you thanks. For his total integrity, selflessness, and energetic striving for excellence expressed over the last 27 years of faithful and honorable service, we give you thanks. And so, as it was written long ago, so say we here today of Sergeant Major Fairchild, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Bless him now, God, as he continues to serve you and others in a new ministry. Thank you for the sacrifice and service of his wife, Laura, and children, Melanie, Damon, and Corey, Jr. Only you know the depth of sacrifice that they have made over the years to serve our nation. Bless them, and may they never forget that they will always be part of our family. In the midst, Lord, of our celebration today, we pray for your protection for the men and women serving in harm's way all around the world. Give them and their loved ones courage to see the mission through and strength to thrive. Finally, Lord of hosts, guide of our nation and our service, that there may be peace and justice in the land. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you to the 4th Infantry Division Band for the beautiful rendition of the National Anthem and Chaplain Conklin for the inspirational words. We are honored to have a number of distinguished guests with us today. Please hold your applause until all have been recognized. Chief Warrant Officer 3, retired, Laura Fairchild, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Corey Fairchild. Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's daughter, Sergeant First Class, Melanie Fairchild, and grandson, Elijah. Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's sons, Damon Bybee and Corey Fairchild, Jr. Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's father, Edward Fairchild. Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's mother-in-law, Melissa Magaletta. Mrs. Tammy Parsons, spouse of Colonel Parsons. Lieutenant General Thomas Carden, Deputy Commander, United States Northern Command. Major General John Meyer, Chief of Staff, North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command. 
Chief Master Sergeant John Storms, Command Senior Enlisted Leader, North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command. And to the other general officers, flag officers, senior enlisted leaders, families, and friends present today, we welcome you. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may have noticed the empty chair on the stage. This is to honor our fallen service men and women who could not be here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the presiding official for today's ceremony, Colonel Lamar Parsons, United States Army. So when you make Colonel, the first thing they issue is reading glasses. So just give me a second, please. You know, today's, today's a great day. And, uh, Senior leaders, friends, and most importantly, family of Sergeant Major Fairchild, uh, thank you so much for joining us today as we honor the service of one Command Sergeant Major, Corey Fairchild. It's my honor to participate in today's ceremony and to celebrate his career. Uh, but first, I'd like to thank everyone who helped Sergeant Major and the team put this together. These things just don't happen. And yesterday, watching Sergeant Major Fairchild go doing the rehearsal, as he's supposed to be sitting in that chair, running around, do this, do that, do this, do that, with other Sergeant Majors there going, sit down, we got this. <laughs> so they did great uh, putting this together. As the first speaker today, I get the distinct pleasure of being the least remembered person of this ceremony. Unless I go too long or if I'm too boring, which I hope not to be but because all the attention should be on that gentleman right there, Sergeant Major Fairchild, who's a father, a husband, a son, a leader, and been a great friend, and on his family in that front row that's sitting there who has sacrificed for so many years in supporting him through his career and also has shown a legacy to our nation. Today we'll get to honor Sergeant Major Fairchild in the best way possible in front of his friends, colleagues, family, those that have traveled from afar, those that came from near, those who stop what they're doing to be part of this great event. But I gotta tell you up front, it's gonna be hard to capture 27 years in one ceremony. For whatever we say today, just know that it's only a small recognition of everything that he and his family have done for our nation, our soldiers, their families, and our families to keep the homelands free. For me personally, it's been a true honor to serve with you and serve beside you and to walk the same path since we share a common history, we serve together as war eagles, we serve together as griffins, and proven in battle, my friend. But I'd like to say thank you to the family. Laura, our CW3 retired Fairchild, married 18 years with Sergeant Major, that in itself is a career. <laughs> and to Damon, who's working through real estate certification, Corey Jr., an accomplished track athlete in college, and to his daughter, Sergeant First Class Fairchild, it's also noteworthy, we've served together a couple times because the Army is that small and the MP Corps is a little bit smaller. Um, I think you were a specialist the first time we met and then a Staff Sergeant, now a Sergeant First Class, and, and I, I couldn't be more honored to see you sitting there uh, with this legacy of family. And just noteworthy that friends have traveled from afar. We've got Ed, who's come from the East Coast, as well as his mother-in-law, Melissa. Uh, thank you so much for supporting Sergeant Major and the family and his endeavors. And then probably to my new little buddy, Elijah, over there, 10 years old. Had a birthday two days ago. Happy birthday, right? But the cake today is for your grandpa. Uh, and so we'll all work, work through that. Now, as we introduced earlier, uh, his spouse, Sergeant Major's spouse, Laura, she's a retired warrant officer. And we often joke around the military that your spouse, your partner, your loved ones at home always have one rank higher than you. Now, because she's a retiring warrant officer, she had you outranked at work and at home. <laughs> and, and just to kind of prove that, just a quick story about Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major's an avid hockey fan. He told me he was from New York, and I don't know much about hockey, but he loves hockey. So I'm like, you must be a Rangers fan. And he shook his head, no, I'm not a Rangers fan. And so I said, you must be an Islander fan. And he shook his head, no. And of course, I didn't think there were any more hockey teams in New York, so I gave up. And I said, who are you a fan of? And he goes, Carolina Hurricanes. 
And I was like, huh? So how does someone from New York like the Hurricanes? And he quickly replied, well, Laura told me I had to. <laughs> so, so we were just so, so happy for that, uh, that we kind of laid out who, who's in charge. Many times at these ceremonies, the speaker often restates all the jobs that the honoree, retiree, has had, but I'm not going to review his biography. I'm only going to say you don't become a command sergeant major without being in the top 1% of enlisted leaders in the Army, and I'd argue top 1% of all leaders in the Army, because at every level of leadership, sergeant major has demonstrated that he's the top of his profession, whether it's a squad leader, a first sergeant, or an operations sergeant major. He's always shown that tactical excellence, technical competence, and given astute device to those around him. You see, as a sergeant major, and he knows this well, he's charged with providing for the well-being of soldiers, regardless of rank or position, as well as their families, and to provide the advice to commanders at all levels and to be a mentor to all, all soldiers, including old colonels like me. There are a couple of jobs I want to highlight, and they represent three of the four badges he's wearing on his uniform today. He was a recruiter, which meant he selected and brought people in to serve this great nation. He was part of the Forces Command Inspector General's office, which made sure families and soldiers' well-being were always taken care of. And he was a drill sergeant, which meant he was responsible for training those that he recruited and then going to inspect those that took care of him. <laughs> and I just feel honored that we probably have touched a few of those. And I often wonder how many soldiers he impacted, because each one of those jobs is extremely tough. Most soldiers have done none. Some have done some. Few have done two. And less have done three, if you, if you ever see those three badges. And none of those are easy. What an achievement. So without going into too much public math, because I'm not real smart, I think that number he has personally touched is in the high thousands. I know it was close to 4,000 recruits and then being a drill sergeant with 170 to 200 per cycle over three years. You guys do the math. Each one demanded excellence, precision, technical and tactical competence for his teams have set the conditions for the next generation of soldiers in the legacy of the Army to come. And I imagine we all owe you a great thanks for the quality and the care you've taken care of those soldiers because I know a lot of soldiers, airmen, Marines, sailors that you've taken care of in the building. That fourth badge on his blues represents a unit that he served with in combat. I believe the big red one, sir. Now this is not about war stories. This is not about this, this one time, <laughs> but highlights a small portion of the sacrifice Sergeant Major Fairchild has made for his country in the defense of freedom. And he used his own words. Some of his best memories were leading men and women in combat. Unquote. Finding the good and positive during the hardest of times, and we know how hard they were. Now, if you look at the program, there are a couple of pictures highlighting the camaraderie, and he is, and if you're trying to find him, he's the young guy, right? <laughs> easy to find. But what I want to do is you're kind of thinking about that and we're reflecting. I want to describe a typical day for Sergeant Major Fairchild from my lens, not his, but mine. He's come into the office and he greets everybody with the utmost dignity and respect. He spent most of his time asking about their day, their evening, their families, what they did yesterday, what they're doing tomorrow, and where he could help. And it'd always be this steady flow of people coming in and out, in and out. Do you have five minutes? Can I talk to you? Can I get some advice, Sergeant Major? I'm talking all services, all ranks, including our civilians. It is fun to watch. I'll spend a lot of time in his office asking for mentorship, some thoughts, but it wasn't just him sitting in the office, it was him walking the halls in other people's work areas. How are you doing? What's going on? Let me help you with that problem. Come vent with me. And then, Laura, I know the family knows this, only what the small Sergeant Major Fairchild can generate quickly, you know which one I'm talking about, and that little bit of sarcasm that comes in his voice, he gives words of wisdom and insights that only command Sergeant Majors can give. Now, I'll share a personal vignette. I personally remember a time where I was having one of those days, and everybody's had one of those days. Nothing was going right. I was probably a little aggravated. My job was tough. I was working uh, down for, at the time, sort of deputy commander, and you know how uh, difficult that can be in there. And uh, I was letting, sir, not for you. Uh, 
But I was being human that day. And Sergeant Major grabbed me, pulled me to the side, and said, hey, let's talk. What's going on? What happened? You, have, you remember that day? I remember it like it was yesterday. And so he gave me that Sergeant Major advice and told me, hey, I'm going to help you see yourself. And he did, and I appreciate that. And then once again, with that smile that goes up on the lips and that little sarcasm, he said, you better, sir? I said, yes, Sergeant Major. He said, good, move along while other people are waiting. <laughs> and so that's the trait that only Sergeant Majors can master over the years. His years of service in every leadership position, every hard job, is a testament to who the person he is. Now, before I end, I am going to talk directly to the family, but I want to put a public service announcement out. If you haven't detected, there's a lot of dust in the air and there's a lot of pollen outside, and we're in the Army, and it's much like baseball, there's no crying in the Army. But if you do decide you have bad allergies and you get uh, red eyes or if you pause for dramatic uh, response, I have something for you. It is an army issue device to soak up any pollen-related uh, <laughs> things that come out of those eye sockets. Now, he knew that was coming. Now, it's our major's family. I'm going I'm to talk to him for a second before I wrap up and I just ask you, uh, everyone else uh, to support us here. For a career, Sergeant Major has split his time between the Army and you. Many times we've asked him to make tough decisions on where to go and what to do. The last 27 years have provided him great memories of leading men and women in the service, but he split his time with you. Make no doubt about it, though, where his greatest memories and accomplishments are. Now, he will admit and I will say he brags, and he rightfully so, that his greatest accomplishments are you, his wife, his kids, his family, his grandson. And I have listened to so many stories, and those stories have been inspiring about the sacrifice you make and what you do in your lives. Now, he may not wear that uniform much longer because he's going to fade away like old soldiers do, and we're going to celebrate him, but he's coming back to you. I promise. Sergeant Major, congratulations. I love being your battle buddy. You're not my Sergeant Major, but you're my Sergeant, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Parsons. Ladies and gentlemen, the guest speaker for today's ceremony is Major General John V. Meyer III, Chief of Staff, North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command. A distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, the Sergeant Major's family. Thank you all for attending today's event. Now, he is my command, Sergeant Major, and they always give advice. He's like, sure, you're not funny. <laughs> Don't try to be funny. <laughs> but I can't help myself. <laughs> Colonel Parsons is funny. <laughs> Where did you get? There you are. That was great. That was a great, great, great remarks. And I think you encapsulated and captured how we all feel about the Sergeant Major and his impact. So, so here goes my funny little story. Uh, you heard Colonel Parsons say, you know, when you get to Colonel, they issue you glasses. When you get to general, you can't remember where you found them, where you put them. <laughs> so I don't have a speech to read to you today. What I'm gonna try to do is encapsulate the significance of what it means to serve your country for 27 years. So this journey began 27 years ago when a young Sergeant Major raised his right hand and took an oath to support and defend something larger than himself. And we often don't often articulate what that is. And we hear on the news and we have people thank us that they volunteer to serve something larger than themselves and nobody ever defines what that something is. That something that the Sergeant Major took an oath to support and defend are the ideals of our country. It's a framework of laws that set our nation apart. I've been fortunate in a different job to travel globally I have met heads of state from communist China to the royal family in England. And I have visited many different countries. And we have the best system of government 
right here in our country. And what's special about everybody sitting in this room, if you are here right now, you're part of that. You're part of the United States military, either wearing a uniform or a civilian, a family member or a friend. And what is significant for the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard that serve in this command, or civilians that raise their right hand, we all took an oath to support and defend those ideals. We all know that there's some challenges in our country. All of us know that. But we are the ones who give us hope that tomorrow will be better than today. And Sergeant Major took that oath. Thank you for your 27 years of service to our country, for defending those values that set us apart. But you didn't do it by yourself. When I first met the Sergeant Major, he started having allergies in the first conversation. He started having this allergy attack or something. I'm like, what is going on? But what he was talking about with his family. And it was very clear to me from the beginning that the most important thing in his life was his family. From Laura, from you, to the three kids, the grandson, family and friends that have joined us. A day did not go by where he did not tell me a story about something that you all did. And it was very clear to me that his inspiration were you sitting right in front of him. So thank you. He may have volunteered to serve as a soldier in the United States Army. Laura, you also served. Mel, you serve right now. The next two, one's gonna be doing real estate and race car driving, one's gonna be running in the Olympics. But we do, we do have a place for you in the Army. <laughs> Just letting you know. But thank you for doing what you do. You supported your husband, your father, your grandfather, and whether or not you realized it, the fact that he was separated from you weighed on him every single day. So thank you for, for your support to a soldier in the United States Army. Thank you. Now, Colonel Parsons did an amazing job of outlining a career. All I try to do is put the award into a little bit of perspective. We've already talked about 27 years of defending the values which set our nation apart. But we give awards in the military for performance, for impact, and for responsibility. So performance as a non-commissioned officer. We recognize his potential. He's less than the 1% of the soldiers in the Army who became a command sergeant major. But the performance of an NCO, what does a non-commissioned officer do? A non-commissioned officer leads soldiers. A non-commissioned officer just doesn't talk about leadership. The non-commissioned officer is a leader. And what is a leader? It's an individual whose actions embody their beliefs. That's what a non-commissioned officer is. That's what a leader is. It's an individual whose actions embody their beliefs. And the beliefs that Sergeant Major embodied were the Army values and those of his family. And through that, he inspired his soldiers to choose to follow him. See, everybody gets a vote. And when we serve together in combat in the 1st Infantry Division, a soldier gets to vote on whether or not they're going to follow you when you stand up and say, follow me. Sergeant Major led in such a way that he inspired his soldiers. They chose to follow him. And that, I think, is the mark of a leader. And then he went out and he created discipline units where soldiers were trained to standard, and those standards were enforced. That's what the non-commissioned officer does in the United States Army. And because of that, you've had an enormous impact. So not only have you performed at all levels of leadership in the Army, from team leader to command sergeant major, he's had an impact. And you've heard Colonel Parsons kind of outline that impact and the number of soldiers that he has touched, and then service members across the Joint Force, and then the Department of the Army and Air Force now, civilians, countless. And you never know, you, you never realize at the time the difference that you have made. But I guarantee, through all the different positions you've had and this your interaction, you have made a difference. So not only have you performed, you've had an enormous impact. And the last thing is the level of responsibility. The level of responsibility of a command sergeant major to accomplish the mission, 
lead his men and women, and care for their families. The command sergeant major is wrapping up a 27-year career. And it's, it's hard to just put everything into the shadow box that you talked about last night. But thank you for your service. Laura and the family, thank you for everything you've done. We sure do appreciate you. We're going to miss you tremendously, Sergeant Major. And we will have the watch. Thank you. Thank you, Major General Meyer. Major General Meyer will now present Command Sergeant Major Fairchild with the Legion of Merit. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Attention to orders. The United States of America, this is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Legion of Merit to Command Sergeant Major Corey J. Fairchild, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service and achievement while serving over 27 years in the United States Army. Command Sergeant Major Fairchild distinguished himself through his dedication to and support of the United States Army over multiple assignments in peacetime and wartime. His service culminates as the Commandant Headquarters North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command, where he served as a trusted advisor to the Chief of Staff in matters focused on improving operational readiness, force protection, and quality of life initiatives. He also ensured that command climate discipline, and professional development remained at the forefront of organizational culture. Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's numerous and distinguished contributions to the United States reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Army. Signed, Thomas M. Carden, Jr., Lieutenant General, Deputy Commander, United States Northern Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Colonel Parsons, please join Command Sergeant Major Fairchild at center stage. He will now present Command Sergeant Major Fairchild with the retirement certificate. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that Command Sergeant Major Corey J. Fairchild, having served faithfully and honorably is retired from the United States Army on the first day of February 2025. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army Chief of Staff. We rehearsed this, I promise. <laughs> Command Sergeant Major Fairchild, we are also pleased to present you with the following certificate of appreciation from the 46th President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden, Jr. It reads, I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embody the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You present the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. Command Sergeant Major also received certificates from several former presidents during his period of service as well. Those are on display near the front of the room. The United States Army recognizes that our service members would not be able to succeed without the unwavering support, commitment, and understanding of their families. It is only fitting that during the transition from one chapter to the next, we honor the individuals who played such a crucial role in their service members' career. At this time,
We would like to recognize Chief Warrant Officer 3, retired Laura Fairchild, for her remarkable career. Thank you, family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Command Sergeant Major Corey J. Fairchild, United States Army, retired. Mm. These things open? All right. So I didn't pay Colonel Parsons for any of his remarks. Sir, I do appreciate it, especially the family ones. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thank God for uh, keeping and protecting me and my family on this journey. Uh, I got to tell you, Army doesn't issue these, by the way. <laughs> this is a joint thing. I think I got it from the Air Force. Sorry. Wagers on me crying. Lee Soda. I don't know. Sorry. Lost money or made money, depending. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, and recognize my mother-in-law, Melissa. You know, thank you for coming all the way from New Hampshire. I appreciate you being here, and thank you for your encouragement. Prepared my selector, Master Paul, Sergeant First Class O'Neill, Major Sternitsky, our narrator, Mr. Eric Devault, Sergeant First Class Leslie, Chaplain Conklin, Protocol Team, the entire Protocol Team. You are my family. I mean, I've spent a whole lot of time with the Protocol Team, so I appreciate all of you, Miss Vicky. Thank you for coming. Um, and then the 4th uh, Public Affairs Team and then the 4th Infantry Division Band and anyone else who had a, a hand in this event. These things, like Colonel Parsons said, don't just happen without, a significant, without significant planning and effort. And your efforts have made a memorable event for me and my family. And I thank all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to give, join me in giving them a round of applause. <laughs> General Morrow, thank you for the, uh, the kind words and for being part of the ceremony today. Uh, I know you're incredibly busy, uh, but I also know the person you are that you would not miss this opportunity for the world. Uh, I'm beyond grateful for your leadership, mentorship, and most importantly, your friendship. Thank you again, sir. <laughs> Colonel Parsons, thank you for serving as my presiding official today. Little known fact that you not only served as my brigade commander, but also my daughter's. Thank you for your leadership, mentorship, and fellowship during our time together and your influence on my family. Your passion for people is unparalleled and asset to any organization you've been assigned. <laughs> I wish you all the best on your retirement in the next two weeks. Uh, and look forward to a bright future ahead for you, Tammy and the boys. I'm honored by your kind words today and forever grateful for your friendship. Over the past few weeks, I've reflected over the past 27 years, 26, almost 27, 27 of Stripes <laughs> um, And I've contemplated what I wanted to say during the life, to say the least. Uh, and the ability to use his tools is again hung in the balance. You know, he taught me that your words matter, and if you say, instilled in me that our last name matters. And in this profession, where our daily anecdotes, my father's influence, uh, what I'm most proud of is his genuine care for people. Uh, he always had a hot cup of coffee or cold beverage and a listening ear for those in need. We may not have had everything we wanted growing up, but we always had what we needed. Thank you, Dad, for setting the example for your love and ever-present guidance along the way. I love you. 
But that part's going to suck. <laughs> my mom taught me to do things to the best of my ability. There's no point in doing anything halfway. She always had the innate ability to distill problems down to the simplest fit form, which proved vital to my success throughout my career. She found pleasure in using my competitive nature to her advantage. I'm a little competitive. <laughs> we had a crab apple tree in our backyard, and it was a chore to pick those up before we cut the grass, or they became projectiles out of the lawnmower. Uh, in her infinite wisdom, she made a bet with me that she could hit a bird feeder we had out in the bushes before I could. I'm like, sweet, I can do this. Before I knew it, I was hurling crab apples in rapid succession until there were nowhere apples to throw. And I turned around and she sheepishly grinned, knowing she succeeded to get me to clean up the apples in the yard without any pushback. <laughs> she, she was always one step ahead of me. Uh, this is one of the million memories I have that were the framework that built the person who stands here today. Thank you, Mom, for setting uh, this journey in motion, for always challenging me, and for believing that I could do anything in this world. I'm not the person I am today without your love and support of my family. Uh, my mother may not be with us anymore, but I know she's here in spirit. Love you, Mom. Whew, here we go. My best friend Dave is here. Oh, boy. And if you're looking for dirt on me, that guy's got a whole truck full. Dave, raise your hand. That way people know who to go to. Okay, here you go. He's a police officer, though, so he may not self-incriminate. He will probably dime me out, though. Uh, Dave, thanks for always having my back for the, and for the years of friendship. We may not talk every day, but I am on phone call. Call aware or short flight if you need me. And you know that. Uh, who knew that the two punk kids from Harvard have achieved all the things we have? And I mean that wholeheartedly. We had the conversation this morning over breakfast. Soldiers, uh, non commissioned officers, warrant officers, officers, and, and civilians. I take uh, inventory of my time in uniform, I can honestly say that we made an impact. We made an impact in uniform and executed our assigned mission. Always looked at each day. The difference may not have been this uh, moment. All of those moments added up, and the organization benefited from those efforts. I'd love to take sole credit for my approach and methodology, but great, uh, great mentors like Pete Ladd, Lee Sodic, Chris Reeves, and Ryan Raison set the example and showed me what, it, what right looked like. <laughs> They motivated uh, and inspired me to, uh, to be the leader soldiers wanted to follow. A leader that holds the line and enforces standards, but knows when there's something else going on that's impacting a soldier's performance. They also provided a swift kick in the backside when I needed it, uh, needed some course correction, and that seemed to be a frequent occurrence, right, Lee? <laughs> Amen. Um, none of these accomplished or successes I've experienced was due to my, own, my efforts alone. There was always a battle buddy, a, a soldier, an NCO, a warrant officer, officer standing beside me every step of the way. In this job, I've served with exceptional Marines, sailors, airmen, guardians, Coast Guardsmen, Canadian servicemen and women, our DOD civilians. They've all stu stood shoulder to shoulder with me and worked day in and day out in the defense of our homelands. I've been a part of exceptional command teams with commanders that truly understood the value of NCOs and what we bring to the table. <laughs> And I thank all of you uh, for trusting my leadership and genuine care that we shared for our people. For all those who served with me, you are the unsung heroes of my career, and I'm deeply grateful and humbled for the lasting impact you've had on my life. Another moment that's going to suck, just letting you know. <laughs> One of the uh, greatest accomplishments in my life, I think you stole my words, sir. Uh, greater than any individual accomplishment or accolade are the three kids sitting in that front row. Uh, it Sunshine and rainbows, I assure you. Um, I'm not exactly a pleasant uh, to be around without my morning coffee or two. Uh, each of you may have uh, endured many early mornings, late nights, training events, NTC rotations, deployments, mandatory face but you never gave up. You continue to push forward. Of you and how you've an amazing day. In some cases, there's always that class. You need a shovel on whose car are we driving. 
I have those friends too. Um, um, and most of them fits, most of, uh, most. 247 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14th, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while well, the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are well. red symbolizes hardiness and valor, it signifies purity and innocence, and blue represents vigilance perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, person the free that others won for us for generations to come by displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight them and the 20th century, military in every major conflict on lands, skies, and seas around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. In honor of Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's dedicated service to the United States of America, the flag presented today was not only proudly flown over headquarters NORAD and U.S. NORTHCOM, but was also flown over the skies of Colorado in an F-16 Charlie Fighting Falcon on September 5th, 2003. At this time, Melanie Fowler, retirement flag father, Command Sergeant Major Fairchild, as a small token of appreciation for his 27 years of service. As we honor Command Sergeant Major Fairchild's service today, we know that the Fairchild family legacy lives on and the next generation stands ready to win our nation's wars. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for Command Sergeant Major Retired Corey J. Fairchild. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the playing of Old Soldiers Never Die, the Army Song, and the departure of the official party. <laughs> 